preaching the gospel. I just experienced this yesterday. Now, thankfully, the guy I preached to, he ended up getting saved. But one of the things that, that he brought up was this repentance issue. And he kind of gave the right answer at first, but then he was like, you know, when, when I gave him an example of well, what, do you, what happens if somebody puts their faith in Christ, but then later on they sin, they do something real bad, and they die. And he's like, well, you know, they, they, they would have needed to repent of that. They need to repent of that sin or else they're not going to make it to heaven. And this is a common belief that a lot of people have. And I'll tell you right now, if someone believes that you have to repent of any sins, of, of you know, specific sins or really bad sins, that person is not saved. And I'm going to prove it to you this afternoon that that is a works-based salvation. And we're going to use the Bible as our source. The Bible is our definition for these words. And we want to be very careful that we're always using very clear terminology when we preach the gospel and very accurate terminology for that matter as well. You know, a lot of people use phrases like, oh, I, I invited Jesus into my heart. Now... That can be, mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. It's not very clear. Now, I, if someone uses that terminology, especially when I'm out sowing, I mean, it's not, it's not like it's just awful. But we just want to be very, very careful that we are going to be very clear when we try to present the gospel to other people. And you always need to make sure when someone makes a statement like that, that you dig deeper and try to figure out what is it exactly that they mean by that. And even as we go through this, if someone tells you you have to repent of your sins to be saved, dig deeper. Because there's actually a lot of people who are saved that will say that statement. They'll make that statement because they've heard it over and over and over and over and over and over again. But when you really ask them what their beliefs are, they don't believe that you have to like give up your sins in order to be saved. They don't think you have to do that. They're actually trusting in Jesus Christ. But when you hear something just repeated, 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 just get drilled into your head, you end up repeating a lot of the things that you hear. So uh, we're going to dig into this. We're starting off here in Genesis chapter 6. It's actually the very first mention of repent or repented or repenting, you know, any form of the word repent in the Bible is found here in Genesis chapter 6. And it's very interesting because the very first mention, it's talking about God repenting. And I think the most common misconception that people have about the word repent is that they automatically assume, if you just ask someone to define repent, just your average person out there, average churchgoer, what they're going to probably tell you is to turn from your sins. They define repent for me. Turn from your sins. And they automatically associate the word repent with turning from sin. And that's false. The word repent most basically and literally means to rethink. And I brought this up in a previous sermon. You know, if you know any other foreign languages, there's a root word has come from that pent. And like in Spanish, it's pensar. And, and I, don't, I, I know there's other languages, Germanic languages, that'll have a similar type of a root to it. Uh, I, I, I'm not fluent in, any, in any, la any other languages, but I've seen them before. I've seen the, the references, and they all mean to think. Like in Spanish, I know pensar means to think. And here, even in English, if someone's a pensive person, it means they're thoughtful. If so, you know, so the root word of this just is from to think. And when you repent, you're rethinking. You're thinking again. You're, you're, you're changing your mind about something.